what's going on y'all it's cone back here again today with another video and today i'm gonna be going through the biggest item on every nba team's wish list heading into this holiday season we're about a week away from christmas the christmas day game so i'm in the festive spirit and i decided to go through and talk about one thing that every team is really looking for right now in the nba year this could be a trade candidate, this could be the return of a player from injury, a bounce back after players had a rough start to the year, things like that. We're going to go through every team alphabetically, starting with the Atlanta Hawks and ending with the Washington Wizards, like we typically do in these every team videos. Timestamps, as always, for every single team if you want to go ahead and find your favorite squad. And yeah, should be a good time. Leave a like and subscribe if you enjoy. Hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on future videos. As always, would love to hear your takeaways down below in the comments and what you think your team's biggest wish should be on this list. Let's start things off with Atlanta. Their biggest item on the wish list is the return of Jalen Johnson. He was looking like one of the top MIP candidates coming into the year. He performed like it for the beginning of the season, and now he's out with injury for, I believe, at least four or so more weeks. It sucks because he was playing really well. He was very often their second best player a lot of nights. And when he was playing, the Hawks were looking at least okay. They've been terrible since he's been gone. And I just dropped a whole video talking about how the Hawks were just really bad in general. I don't think Jalen Johnson's going to save them when he comes back, but before they figure out what they need to do to fix this, they probably want to see the return of their young rising star forward, who I think could be a critical piece to this team long term. For the Boston Celtics, they're not asking for much at this point. They're the best team in the league, but I guess if there's anything, it's probably just a depth piece or two for the bench. The starting lineup is probably the best in the entire league. They've got four, maybe even five all-star caliber players that start every single night for them. They've got a couple good guys off the bench. Really, if they could just round out the rotation with a couple more extra guys, especially in case of injuries, which this lineup is susceptible to, the Celtics might just become unstoppable. I mean, they might already be. They've maybe had the hardest schedule in the league so far, at least one of them, and they're still at the top of the Eastern Conference despite dealing with a couple of injuries. The Celtics might be unbeatable, but if they add more pieces there may be nothing the rest of the league can do. The Brooklyn Nets are going a bit bolder and their wish is for a franchise guy. This team has a lot of really great supporting pieces. Mikael Bridges, I think, could be a great two or three guy in a championship team. Cam Thomas continues his rise. Maybe he's eventually one of their franchise cornerstones. You've got a Spencer Dinwiddie, a Dorian Finney-Smith, a Cam Johnson, and Nick Claxton. All these guys are having really fun seasons and the Nets currently are playing some really good basketball. So if they somehow manage, whether it's this season or on the deadline, if someone happens to become available or in this upcoming offseason, add like that one superstar player to put the supporting cast around, the Nets might become one of the scarier teams in the Eastern Conference. As is, they're not ready to compete, but keep an eye out on the trade market. If one of those guys does become available and say they're like, hey, Brooklyn's a pretty good spot to go, the Nets could very quickly turn this thing around from decent team to absolutely terrifying. For the Charlotte Hornets, I think the pretty clear number one item on their list is the return of LaMelo Ball. He was playing the best hoops of his career before the recent ankle injury at the end of November, supposed to be reevaluated around early December, I think it was December 7th to be exact. Haven't gotten a ton of updates. They said he's progressing. They'll give more information when it's available. But right now, he's kind of week to week. So I don't know if we're going to see LaMelo Ball back before the new year. And that sucks. This has been a consistent theme for him over the past couple of years. These ankle injuries that just keep lingering. And when he's on the court, he looks like one of the best young players in the world. He was dispelling a lot of the narrative surrounding him coming into the season with his play this year. Hopefully he comes back soon and the Hornets get their franchise guy back out in the court. For the Chicago Bulls, they're looking for the continued ascension of Kobe White. Ever since Zach Levine went out with injury, Kobe White has been unbelievable. He's looked like one of the best young guards in the Eastern Conference, hooping on a nightly basis, efficient, often being their number one option, taking the ball in clutch time moments over DeMar DeRozan and making it count for the most part. He's been electric. And this is what I want to see from the Bulls. I hope they trade Levine, trade DeRozan, give the young guys a chance like Kobe White, Patrick Williams. Those young guys run the show and see what you have on this team. Begin the rebuild. It's way more fun when the young guys are playing like this, win or lose, than seeing the veterans keep trying the same thing over and over again. And who knows, maybe if you give Kobe White, who's still pretty young, the reins full time, he could ascend into one of the franchise guys you've been looking for. For the Cleveland Cavaliers, the number one thing they're looking for is long-term commitment from Donovan Mitchell. They've been dealing with injuries this year. They haven't gotten the great progression we were hoping for from some of their young guys. But the biggest problem has been the continuous cloud that's hanging over the franchise that Donovan Mitchell is a free agent after next season. And there's been a lot of reports that he's leaving, that he's going to go to New York or here or there. And that for the most part, most people don't believe he's going to stay in Cleveland. I'm not necessarily buying that. I know media likes to try and push stars out of small markets. So I'm not saying he's going to go somewhere. But what I am saying is that the Cavs probably would like some kind of 
affirmation or long-term commitment from Donovan Mitchell saying, hey, I'm willing to stay here before they have to start considering the possibility of maybe trading him at some point soon. For the Dallas Mavericks, I think their top wish list item kind of stays the same from the offseason, and it's just some help in the front court. Derek Lively has been amazing this season, but they still need some help around him. Dwight Powell's not great. Rashawn Holmes isn't very good. You haven't gotten great play from a number of your big men. The defense has been kind of weak because of that. If they could find a way to go out there and add better depth at the big man position, just give them some front court defense in general. I think the Mavericks would really appreciate that, and it would take them from a really sneaky team to one of the scarier teams in the Western Conference. For the Denver Nuggets, I think the big item on their wish list is just some depth. This team is still one of the best in the world. They've been a bit shakier than they were at this point last season. It seems like there's a little bit of a championship hangover. Some guys aren't playing as well as we were expecting going into the season. Although I do think part of that is just they don't have a lot of depth that they can rely on. Last year, they were a pretty deep team. They had some great role players like a Bruce Brown off the bench, for example. Now they're at times relying on DeAndre Jordan. And when they've dealt with injuries, they've had to go really deep into that bench. There's young guys who are playing well at moments, but they're also kind of inconsistent. I think if they could just add some depth they'd be fine, and I still do consider them my favorites in the West at the moment. For the Detroit Pistons, their biggest wish list item is a single win. Just one. That's all they're looking for. They haven't won in almost two months at this point. They're getting pretty close to setting the record for the longest losing streak in the NBA. They do play the Hawks and as I record this, maybe that's their chance to get a win. But with the way things are going right now, I wouldn't be surprised if they rack up 30 L's before they get their next W. For the Golden State Warriors, their number one wish list item is the Andrew Wiggins Renaissance. What happened to Wiggins? He went from an all-star player a couple of seasons ago on a championship run to last year being in and out of the lineup with some personal issues to now being one of the worst players on the team. He's gotten benched as of late. He doesn't look confident at all out there. The shot is gone. The defense is kind of rough. What happened to the Wiggins that was the X factor in the championship run? Where did he go? And if he can come back, he can elevate this Warriors team at least to back being a decent squad in the West. Over in Houston, the Rockets are currently wishing for a Jalen Green breakout. Despite all the positives for them this season with Alperin Shengun in the defense and Ime Odoka being a great coach, Jalen Green has been kind of disappointing. He's had some good moments recently and throughout the season he's had his ups and downs, but there hasn't been this big breakout year that I was hoping for from him. I thought having Fred Van Vliet next to him in the backcourt would help him out a little bit, take some pressure off him, give him a playmaker. Hasn't exactly been the case. He just hasn't looked aggressive at times. He's been inefficient. I don't know. I don't know if we're going to see it at some point this season. Maybe it takes until next year, but it would certainly help this Rockets team that's looking for someone to break out as their superstar, although Alperin Shengun could be on that path to becoming that type of player. But if Jalen Green also broke out to become the player they're hoping he would become when they took him with a top three pick, that certainly wouldn't hurt either. The Indiana Pacers wish list has one thing on it, and it's just defense. Any defense of any kind at this point. They're not the worst defense in the league anymore, but they're up there in that conversation. They give up consistently 120, 130, 140 points. The offense is fantastic, but it doesn't mean much if they can't get stops. Like if this team could consistently get some stops, they would be one of the best teams in the entire NBA, but that's not the case right now. Now, maybe that comes through a trade. I think a guy like an Ojen Anobi would be the perfect addition for this team, as well as a number of other defensive-minded wings, but somebody, just anybody defensive-minded needs to be on this roster by the time the deadline rolls around, please. For the LA Clippers, the biggest thing on their wish list is just the continued health of this big three. James Harden, Kawhi Leonard, and Paul George have all been very injury prone over their recent careers, but so far this season, hardly any of them have missed time. They haven't had an extended missed absence amongst the three of them, which is very surprising and it's huge for the Clippers. They're building cohesion, all three of them are playing really well right now, and they're rapidly ascending the Western Conference standings. After going, I think, on a six game losing streak to begin the Harden era, they've recently won seven games in a row. They're a playoff team at this point. They've looked fantastic, and if these three guys can stay healthy both now and into the playoffs, they're one of the scariest teams in the West. And we're gonna stick with that theme in Los Angeles because the Lakers are also wishing for continued health from their big guys. Mainly LeBron James and Anthony Davis, both like Paul George, Kawhi Leonard, and James Harden, have been injury prone as of late in their careers. But so far this season, you know, knock on wood, haven't seen any extended absences from those two guys, and it's allowed the Lakers to win the in-season tournament to put together a really good stretch of basketball, where they're one of the better teams in a very loaded Western Conference. If they can stay healthy, the Lakers consistently look great, but I'm a little worried at some point we're going to see one of those two get hurt, and if they miss time, this Lakers team could rapidly descend the standings. Good news for the Memphis Grizzlies, their wish is about to come true because their biggest item is the return of John Morant, and he's one game away. Tonight, as I'm uploading this video, the Grizzlies play the Oklahoma City Thunder, and I believe that will be the final game of John Morant's absence. He's back tomorrow, which is really 
really exciting. Super hyped to see John Morant back out there on the court. The Grizzlies desperately need him. They didn't do great in his absence, but they've done enough. Like they're not that far behind some of the other teams. If John Morant comes back, plays the way that we've seen him play in the past, might be a little bit of rust to begin his NBA season, but if he gets back to the usual John Morant, they get a bit more health from some of their supporting guys. The Grizzlies could certainly still catch some of these teams and grab one of those play-in spots. Over Miami, they're currently wishing for health of any kind. The Heat have felt like the most decimated team by injuries out of anybody so far this season. In fact, I saw this graphic where someone put together a list of the teams and the percentage of minutes that they've lost from some of their top contributors. The Heat were at the top of that list. Bam Adebayo has only played 16 out of 26 games. Tyler Hero has only played eight. Jimmy Butler's missed a few games. Caleb Martin missed a lot. They've had injuries across the board. The only guy who's played every game for them so far has been Jaime Hotkaz. And shout out to him, he's been really good but they need more players to actually be on the court. Surprisingly, they've held their own without all their top guys out there, which is a great sign for the Heat. But at some point during the season, they just got to hope they can actually get their team out there on the floor. For the Milwaukee Bucks, much like the Indiana Pacers who they lost to in the in-season tournament, they're also wishing for defense of pretty much any kind. This offense has been fantastic and they've held their own despite a pretty weak defense in the Eastern Conference, one of the top teams out there but the defense doesn't exist. And I don't see them beating this Boston Celtics team if you can't defend them. I don't know what they're gonna do about it if it has to be trades, if they have to try a different defensive scheme. But right now, they're getting torched defensively. It's looked really, really bad at times. They've gotta find some way to fix this issue. If not, it's gonna be a bit of trouble in the playoffs. For the Minnesota Timberwolves, they're looking for that one solidifying deadline acquisition. This team is really good. They're probably a championship contender at the top of the Western Conference but I think they could still use like one or two more guys at the deadline. One guy in particular I really like would be like an Alex Crusoe. I would love that defensive guard off the bench for them to just even add more of this chaotic defense to the equation that they already have. Maybe they could add an offensive piece off the bench too. I don't know. I don't think they need that much because this is the best team in the Western Conference, like I said, but if they could add that one solidifying piece that establishes themselves firmly as championship contenders, that would be pretty cool. For the New Orleans Pelicans, much like the LA teams, they're just hoping for some sustained health at this point. Right now, they're playing some of their best basketball of the season. They've won four games in a row, I believe, after losing to the Lakers in the in-season tournament. And a lot of that has been the fact that they've just got their guys back. Trey Murphy's back in the lineup. You've got Jose Alvarado back. Zion and Ingram have both been healthy pretty much this entire season. CJ McCollum is back. They're kind of rolling. And it's always been the case with the Pelicans. When they're healthy, they're great. When they're not, not so much. So if they can just get some sustained health, they could probably make a bit of a statement run in this Western Conference. Out here in New York City, where I'm currently recording this video, the Knicks are wishing for a speedy recovery from Mitchell Robinson. Before he got injured, Mitch was playing like one of the best defensive big men in the entire league. His presence on the boards was huge for their identity. He was locking up down low, cleaning up a lot of mistakes. This team's defense doesn't work nearly as well without him as it does when he's on the court. Unfortunately, he's going to miss, I believe, eight to 10 weeks with an injury. Hopefully he comes back sooner than that, or at the very least, right around that time, that timetable wraps up because until he comes back, this Knicks defense is really going to struggle in his absence. For my Oklahoma City Thunder, the number one thing on our wish list is some type of rebounding. The amount of times this season where we've given up one, two, three, even four, five offensive rebounds on one possession is kind of absurd. The fact that we managed to win as many games as we do despite being such a bad rebounding team is kind of astounding. So if I'm the Thunder, right now the number one thing I'm looking for is some type of rebounding presence around the trade deadline, whether that's a young by low guy to just add into this front court, maybe a star caliber player that could add on to this team on a couple different ways, but mainly in the rebounding category. Regardless, the Thunder need to add some type of rebounding in general before they get into their playoff run this year. For the Orlando Magic, the number one thing they're looking for is the return of Markel Fultz and Wendell Carter Jr. As good as they've been so far this season, those two guys I think have each only played five, six games. It's been impressive how they've stayed afloat in their absence. A lot of that has been the play of guys like Jalen Suggs, Anthony Black, uh, Gogo Batadze out there in the front court. He's been a revelation for them so far this season. But when those two guys come back, Marco Fultz to steady the offense a little bit and add even more defense. Wendell Carter as that steady presence in the front court. I think this Magic team could take it up another notch and remain towards the top of the Eastern Conference by the time the season wraps. For the Philadelphia 76ers, right now they're looking for one thing and one thing only, and that's a playoff run that actually makes it to the conference finals. They've looked great so far this season. Embiid's having the best year of his career. Tyrus Maxey's having a breakout year. Nick Nurse looks like a great head coaching acquisition. And they could even maybe go out there and add a third star around the deadline if they want. But none of that matters until they at least make a conference finals. They've got to try and break that drought this year. I think they've got a decent chance. It just honestly might come down to who they play in the playoffs at what point. For the Phoenix Suns, they're currently wishing for just any sustained period with Kevin Durant, Devin Booker, and Bradley Beal on the court together. 
We've seen one full game so far where the three of them have shown up, and they lost the Brooklyn Nets. The Nets are a perfectly fine team, but then literally the next game, they play the New York Knicks, and Bradley Beal twists his ankle pretty early on in, and now he's supposed to miss a few weeks. They just can't get their three stars on the court at the same time. Hopefully it comes at some point soon, but right now it's looking like a bit of a repeat from what we saw with the big three in Brooklyn, which Kevin Durant just so happened to also be a part of. For the Portland Trail Blazers, their number one wish list item is the continued rise of Scoot Henderson. It was a really bad start to Scoot Henderson's NBA career. He looked really rough out there, which is to be expected for a young guard who's still trying to figure things out. But recently, he's been putting it together. The efficiency still isn't great, but I've liked his aggression. I've liked a lot of his playmaking. His defense looks better. He just looks more poised. It's going to take time for him to adjust the NBA's atmosphere, the speed of the game. But I think as time goes on, he's going to get better and better and eventually will end up becoming the franchise guard that they drafted him to be. For the Sacramento Kings, I'm going to say that their wish list item is the final piece that they're rumored to be interested in. We've seen some reports as of late that they could potentially be aggressive around the deadline, maybe looking to use Harrison Barnes's contract and some of the interesting young players they have as well as their picks to go out and try and get maybe like a Pascal Siakam, an OJ Ananobi, a Zach Levine has been rumored. I like the Raptors guys more than Levine, but it seems like they're trying to go out there and get that final piece. Whoever it is, we'll have to wait and see, but I'm hopeful the Kings actually do it because I think a Kings team with one more all-star next to Fox and Sabonis is really, really scary if they get the right guy. For the San Antonio Spurs, the number one thing on their wish list, and this is going to have to wait until the draft, is a franchise guard. They've got their franchise big, their franchise player in general, and Victor Wembanyama. They've got some fun young pieces around him, but they need better guard play in general. They could go out there and get like a veteran guard to help out in the meantime, but really when draft season rolls around, I'm expecting the Spurs to look heavily at the guard position and try and draft somebody to be a pick and roll partner for Victor Wembanyama long term and that's ultimately the best outcome for them this season is getting a top pick and finding that type of player. Over in Toronto the number one thing on their wish list is a direction. Right now they're kind of in limbo. Scotty Barnes is looking great and it feels like they should probably head towards a rebuild but they haven't traded Pascal Siakam yet or Oji Ananobi. They could theoretically bring both of them back or at least try to in the offseason or they could ensure that they don't lose them for nothing and deal them. Everything right now is in question for the Raptors and I think it's going to continue to be up until February when that deadline rolls around and until then we're just going to have to wait and see with Toronto. They've got some interesting things going forward but that February deadline is really going to be the turning point for this franchise into whatever area they're going towards next. Second to last team on this list is the Utah Jazz and for them I said the number one wish list item is just some more assets for this rebuild. I think that's going to come from trading some of their veterans Kelly Olenek, Colin Sexton for example. Maybe they could trade like a Taylor Horton Tucker if a team is interested amongst others. Jordan Clarkson is apparently available I believe according to Chris Haynes. I think they're going to go ahead and trade some guys. I don't think they trade the big guy in Larry Markkinen like some people are thinking. I just don't think that makes sense having a potential franchise type guy or at the very worst a great two option on a team friendly deal like they have him now doesn't come very often. I don't see Utah trading him but I think some of their veteran guys some of their supporting pieces could definitely be gone to give them some more assets and allow them to tank for a top pick to add more talent next to Larry Keontae Walker Kessler in this upcoming draft. And finally for the Washington Wizards the number one thing on their mind is a number one overall draft pick. They've been one of the worst teams in the league so far this season. They don't have a lot of established talent. They need to just keep building through the draft this is the first year of the rebuild and getting a number one overall pick even if it is in a bit of a weaker draft theoretically would be big for them they could add another young guy next to Bilal Kulabala who I think is really good maybe Denny Avdia continues playing like this he seems like he might be a guy Corey Kispert's fun they're just starting to figure out who's going to be part of this young team going forward and a number one overall pick would do a lot for them going to the future but with all that being said those are my number one things on every team's wish list at this point in the season let me know what you thought about my pick for your favorite team's item let me know what you're wishing for as a fan of your favorite team down below in the comments. I appreciate y'all watching. Let me know if you like these every team kind of themed videos. Maybe I'll do more of them in the future. I appreciate y'all watching. I'll see y'all later. Also, leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. Appreciate that. I'll see y'all later. Real and say it back.